Okay, um, hello to welcome to this week's Gasali podcast. We'll start with the recaps, mm-hmm. then mm, hot takes, then the news story. So let's start with the raw recap. Okay, Bailey versus Alexa Bliss. At the end of video play, mm-hmm. Bailey came out to kick off the show with her match against Bliss. Determine the number one contender for Blair Layers. Raw was tied as usual. Sky, Dakota Kai were at her side for support. And I rate Becky Lynch show Chase Sky and Kai away for the steel chair. Given the goddess and even even playing field was worried about outside interference. Yes, I right moments there to watch the match from ringside. Bliss, Bailey, known each other well, haven't ever mentioned for years, so wasted no time getting straight to work. The country has been never faded, so aggressive right away, knowing that we will take care of each other. While well, one or two awkward moments, this was most a solid outing for two former champions. After the role model outside become too restricted by Belair, Bliss was able to hit her finisher for the pin. Bliss offered a Belair a hug, celebrating, but then Bray Wyatt sent Mola flash on screen. She grabbed a yes and allowed to hit Sister Abigail, but looked confused and frustrated. Shelly Gable versus AJ Styles. After Alpha Academy, and he also had a run in backstage. Trying to give him AJ Styles back for a second match of the night. The leader of the account acclaimed wrestling Styles in the match. Forced him to use <coughs> the rip break to escape his grasp. The, the phenomenal one with a drop kick to the jaw. This was a te- battle of technical prowess, which is something both men had space when Styles started to take Gable down. Former Olympian caught her perfectly. Spike Gable, her hair has a slight edge at times. Solomon one ends up winning the Styles Clash. Luke Gallows, the young youth, helped him celebrate through Kalanis in Japan. So, there isn't much to say about the quality of the match. There are two versatile performers on the roster. They did a great job. So, yeah. Um, okay, the Dragon Day versus Street Profits of Tira Sasawa. Fowles win over Akira Tazawa last week. Dominic Suda found himself back in the ring on Monday. The sign was a six-man tag. Match for Finn Balor, Diamond Priest, Francis Ford, and Jellico with Dawkins involved. Dawkins Priest started in the teams, while men have been powerhouse and respect the attendance. They show Cody will be quick on their feet while she my sequence to get things going. It's time for Tazawa Balor to take their turns of the ring. They pace up the pace even more until the hit up brings hit up. Who's close on this in the show into commercial? The match ended up being highly physical, pretty entertaining. As soon as first time in the ring was shorter than everyone else, and may have been a factor. At his bidding to make a late minute to come back, he ended up falling to Mysterio as a priest lent the hand. It ended up being the most highly enjoyable match for several sound nuts moments. So yeah. So yeah, Judgment Day won and it was a good matchup. And let's go from there. Uh, Cancelary versus EO Sky. Jerk, Johnny Gargano, Dexter Lumis came out before a match with a wife full of WWE merchandise. They throwing out the crowd so like the holidays. Mr. I still back got cash from Lumis. Uh, Pierce stopped the main of return. Then when you match with some turn at some point, Sky and Lorraine made their way on a commercial break with this sign. Bailey Kai and Ray Sire Dan's incredible teammate. Sky and Larry know each other one time in see. So so they were really on a good show for the crowd. And for the against with Kai and Bailey and Ray were kept a minimum. So the two veterans could focus on what's going inside in the ring. Sky ended up cleaning and cleaning over the moon sauce at the point. Bailey got out of set. She had the least amount of success in her own group. Alliance for Solo Sakala. Alliance approach Kevin Owens backstage after be at ringside. Constant help having his back. But Kayla reminded him of the history during the whole Ezekiel saga. Was it already possible? The corner came out to play a tribute. As I was saying, corner came out to play a tribute. Count from Matt Reynolds, and written on TV, and Reynolds written your neck. He held off for a long and song, which he usually does before he wrote the rest. So, so, so call us after the next match. Sammy Zane was I saw side. The street champion of the island had control for the first match at the LA Center out of the ring. Had the song again back in the, with a chill chair. This was a match between two big, strong dudes, but was the aggressive most of the fight. The force of the blood when I picked up the win in a basic for solid contest. KO and the same lines from a beating, then delivered a stun to him anyway. So, yeah. Asuka versus Rhea Lipley. 
Two women who fought in war against the Rangers two weeks ago meant this game week when Oscar uh, fought Ripley. Both stars work in physical styles and matches get competitive from the moment the referee called for the bell. Ripley dominated the edge for the first few minutes, but the Empress tomorrow began to make a comeback at the show called Separate. Dominic Mysterio distracted Oscar long enough for Ripley to turn her run into her apron, try to hit the other time, as far as counter to Ascala. Nightmare was able to get into the foot and rope, mysterious, while Ascala spent mass of eyes. In his face, Ripley knocked her down to down for a hit and rip tie for the win. The ending was a little goofy, but it was a good match for two gifted performers. Next is Bobby Lashley versus Seth Rollins. The main event of the show saw Rollins and Lashley fight to see who was the next shot at the series. State Championship, the Almighty Media started dominance by stopping Rollins into a corner before he sent him over the top rope with a clothesline. These two had several comments in the recent months that they learned how to work together to make each other look good. Possibly both veterans and experience chemistry and allowed them to put on, put on a great performance. As Lashley prepared to finish up his opponent, Rollins turned Spear into a pedigree, scored a pin. The Almighty was a rate and took out the referee. Adam Pierce came and tried to talk some sense into him, but at the Lashley shoved. Official said he was fired. It was an update. He was not fired. So, yeah, there it was. NXT recap. Let's go to the NXT recap now. Royal Press challenges Manny Rose. Jason Waller antagonizes Braun Breaker. Grayson Waller erupted in Roseanne Paris. He wanted to open the show. Braun Breaker ride around Rod Weiler, but Manny Rose struck a challenge when NXT wins championship belt. Rest and challenge the holders to put her title on the line the night. This was an action to have Pat open a segment writing the highlight from the NXT Deadly Line line. Both Perez vs. Rose and Breaker vs. Waller got a jump start. Looked like this would lead to a mixed tag team match. Instead, it is a shocking title match announcement. I clicked to change the complex of the show. The Women's Championship match gave a limited challenger at a second hook. Wesley vs. Chase Stacks. Renzo with Tony D'Angelo. The match started early as Chase Stacks. Lorenzo attacked Wesley backstage. Lee fought back. Up back from the advantage, win with a handspring kick. Dijak to the apron as Delian Angelo panted an NGST. NXT North American champion with a clothesline to the back of the head. This was a solid match to help hot start. Stacks looked strong until Lee made his comeback. Lenzo did a good job carrying the first half of the match. Lee was always going to win, but his future challengers continued to trouble him after missing the NXT deadline. The NXT North American champion needed a larger spotlight for the NXT URs. Eat New Year's Evil on January 10th. So yeah, Toxic Extraction versus Ivy Nile and Pat Tana Paxley, G Dolan and JC Jane went after the Ivy Nile and Tana Paxley and side to side super kicks to open the contest. Brawl moved outside with Katana Chance and Katana Carter got involved, attacking Toxic Extraction. This caused the altercation, but fighting continued. The bell started strong. Quickly sent into chaos. Hopefully, these teams they get rematched on the line, but makes sense. Set up a little threat, triple threat title contest in the near future. The next thing is to use the women's tag division more. The champions are good. They have two solid challenges coming up. If the brand can build more teams, the division is, as a whole can thrive. So, Wong Wagner, Snow versus R.C. Jones with Malik Blade and Eris Effin. After Eris Effin, Mr. Snow got into the ringside. Malik Blade caught Wagner with a draw kick from Brian Referee. Austin Jones took advantage, had a wrong cross ride for the win. Wagner got squashed while they were interfering. It shouldn't have been enough for us in NXT Championship. Contend to lose in about three minutes, so lightning is running, coming to an end. So he's going out, putting, putting over talent. It's so, Jones, Jones got a solid boost when it's down. When, once he's back to the best, he's like, Ali, he could be an interesting title contender in NXT. So, on the main roster, WWE will do my better job developing Wagner. He's a decent performer, but he's booking some more interesting. Yeah, something interesting. All right, Javier Benner versus Eichmann Giro. Javier Benner tried to use smart competitor against Eichmann Giro, but was caught caught with Frankenstein to run a draw kick with still the victory. After a script, they had Giro and laid him out with a 360 dive in Seton. That's weird. Anyway, afterwards, scripts attack. Yeah, I, I don't know. Like, Sprint the left of squash match. This was fun working for both men. Ben and Jero had chemistry. He made it clear that Jacket Man was working hard to make most of his TV time. Scripts with Jero is not on on paper, but honestly, it should work hard as a performance. Hopefully, this match will be better establishing scripts in NXT. Josh Briggs, Brooks Jensen, still is pretty deadly rematch with New Day. 
So yeah, Kingston and Xavier Woods celebrated his Jamaican night AC deadline. Pretty dead to land a rematch. They really say they would give a town shot to the British team. They decided to pledge allegiance. But Josh Briggs brought gents around with U.S. flags and reverse to earn a child shot instead. This was a solid segment. Carried by the charisma of the wrestlers, Elton and Prince Kit Wilson had a flexible service street with the New Day that makes every interaction sing. As seen, we smart to lay their arena to our major stage. It was smart that other teams jumped in for the moment. Now we go on to Jamie, J.D. McDonough versus Brutus Creed with Jules Creed. Brutus Creed started strong against Jamie McDonough, but the necessary evil files of Opponent, where opponent opening wear down his opponent. As in, after English year, stopped him from using a chair on Brutus. McDonald went in the ring with Devil inside. This was another classic victim NC ever in match length. Brutus and McDonald could have done more together because there's so much time the brand went to get them. This helped solidify the dog as a threat, threat given that way to put it, he put away Brutus. It was a story made between these and the left on hand line unfinished. Now we got Lyra Vicker debut versus Amir Miller. Amir Miller challenged Lyra Vicker early on, but she could not keep the pace of the Norse Angel. Valkyrie put her opponent away with a David sent on <sighs> another one. After weeks of build up, this fine, forgettable debut. Yeah, it was a forgettable debut, my book. Valkyrie could have been more dominant and it made a nice scene more of what makes her a unique performer in the ring. Yet yeah, instead it was the reduction in the wrestle at the come time, she will need an opponent challenger before upside the performer is clear. The Hudson with Chase U versus Davian Cap. Davian Cap took advantage of Doug Hudson's instance early on in the match. However, once Hudson felt he chased you right behind him, he rallied in the contest with a ready big boo. <laughs> Shame to see Kemp already getting squash after he built solid heat off his feud with Creed Butters. He's been treated out the dust and dead, but Kevin's next he's stalling for a story with Drew Gillack. Hudson's tail to reach an interesting turning point. Feel like he's truly become a part of Chase U. Under Chase U, Pozoi's poised to make him a teacher. This could be a moment where Hudson pulls up a green, green, green skin and becomes a full on top baby face. So, yeah, that's pretty much it. Okay, so once made a van next scene was champion, Mandy Rose versus Roxanne Perez. The reason the title change happened, because Mandy Rose already on the news, I will tell you about the news later on. Basically, Mandy Rose got some, I'm going to tell you right now anyway. Mandy Rose got into trouble, she got fired because she saw some naked pics on time frame. I don't know why, but it is what it is. Mandy Rose didn't deserve better, and this was stupid on WWE's part. I think AEW should capitalize it. It should be good. So let's talk about the match right now. Yeah, okay. Manara had quick control throughout this match, but right, Roxanne Perez saying the fight. She finally she played the NXT Champion Women's Champion with the Pocket Rocks take the win and the title. This is a long time coming. Honestly, Perez earned it. It's a shame fell with Rush, but it's likely Rose and Perez will have a bigger match. No, no, no they're not going to have a match. Manny Rose was fired. I already told you. So, no. But the right... But... This is all about the big one. Show him saying the new women's champion heart. That's Roxanne. The right one with the throne rose. Establishing her future in business. She is the best person to carry the vision going to New Year. She has plenty of challenges from Cora Jade. So we start the Mako Starno and Isa Dawn. So yeah. Rose and Rain been on too long. Well yeah, but she did bring a level of consistency. And it's during a rough period. And no, she's not ready to move on. I already told you she's fired. <laughs> and I already told you the news. That's what happened. <laughs> I'm sorry. I just y'all probably stupid enough. All right. Anyway, everyone's also on NXT. It's okay. Let the women's main event still stale. NXT is still stale. I'm sorry. But Manny Rose deserved better. She should have got fired. All right. But yeah, it's the sponsors' fault. It's the sponsors. You need to pay sponsors. Uh, showing naked pics online, the paywall is not WWE's forte. Let's agree with that. Naked women. <laughs> uh, okay, let's go to the AEW Witcher's coming recap. We got the Elite. Let's start the Elite versus Death Triangle, match four, best of seven. In the event of we was too long to break, the Elite and Death Triangle clash on Wednesday night. They signed the match number four at best seven series for the AEW World Trio Championship. Full of non saying nonsense action processes. This was leaned a little more on the injury angle that Johnson forced to 
exited the ringside by medical officials, leaving his brother Matt and the Kenny Omega in battle pack and into the Zoro Mito and Rene Phoenix on their own. They faced well enough, finding out the Phoenix home, the injured and accident lifted to the ring, tagged into the mat, proceeded to tap out their knee by Phoenix at the bed to smash the injured limb with a timekeeper hammer. The fans saw it not, it felt obvious this match was no way near as good as the first two. Consistency selling on the part of Jackson and sense of being here done this hanging around like a dark cloud. Yeah. The post match from Omega saw him issue a challenge for a no DQ match and hopefully freshen things up. Assuming he's gonna go distance, it's gonna be a very difficult to keep things interesting. So let's hope for that. The opposite of that. Let's go with that. Alright. Well Be MJ has actually for almost compelling for Venom. He ran down three stars ahead of Knights of Main Event, which is sort of fury and some of the fan intenses the desire to see the new world champion. So we got Jeff Jarrett, Co attacking the claim, Jungle Boy Jack Paris is Brian Cage. The W World Tam, Tag Chain to claim, Enter the Thunder's Ovation by Melee Attack by Jeff Jarrett, Lethal, Sound Singing at the Creative Power that we determined and Nancy Bowens and Mass Caster's Heat with the Fiat Feud. Moments later, the machine Brian Cage hit the ring for match with Jack Perry, rolled the last week's dynamite diamond battle royale at Jungle Boy's elimination of the big man. Despite attempt interference from Prince Nana, Perry was able to score Come in from the back of the three. After the match, he can't call that big bill, caught the beatdown courtesy of him, and fell from the number to Lee Morality. Yachty. Hook made a save, the master pop, the heels retreated. The match was fine. It rattled on the strep, and the right guy went over. The tease partnership between Barry and Hook is interesting, but at least it gets sense made more MTW championship issues with variety. The House of Black versus the Factory. Let's go to that. The House of Black versus the Factory. Let's talk about that. Like, the House of Black, it was, like, a segment, like, okay, here we are, yeah, here we are. Malachi Black, Buddy Madison King returned to a circle for the first time since All Out on September 4th. Battling the factory is Kitty Marshall, Cole Carter, Eric Solo, in a six-man tag match. Black Miss sprayed in the corner's eyes by smirking Julian Hart took him out of the equation while Matthews King obliterated the competition, Black put a slashing point on things with Black Mass laying Marshall for the pin. This is the final production here. <laughs> look! This is like the unstoppable force they should have been on the beginning. Black patiently observed destruction caused by his teams and the delivery of the final blow easily the best part of the entire ODL. Represent of the Raven of WCW is a flock of even and means a bad thing. Let's go to backstage. Sky Blue directed the promo at Bit Baker. Issue a challenge for the match at Friday Rampage, mm -hmm. Friday night, which will be Rampage in a minute. At hey, Rampage, you know, like Rampage, you know, something you watch on Friday nights, you know. Okay, more rest for the 20 year old girl who gets to talk. Contender, the better chance that she develops a breakout AEW star clear sees at her. Alright, we got another match. Action on Friday versus Jericho. Erica's loss to Cassinoli may have brought down another downfall and only 10 stars Wednesday night on a diamond with a loss to a competitor for which was a job prior to her match. Maryland Chancellor wrestled sign out action and Andrade. Right around the point, he kicked out the cold break and headed to the commercial break. It became clear that Andrade was not going away in a factory in the previous contest. Tough, resilient, and able to absorb everything in the legend night. Ocho could throw him. Late with MG seemed boundless. He caught Jericho with an ugly Dorito DT and finished him with a running shooting star press. Earning him the biggest win in his career over in conference, and Pepper Superior had gotten the best of Jericho lately, cost him both the Ring of Honor World Champion, and one of his healing defeats in his career. It's an interesting character development, compiled by the insistence that Garcia learns of the San Guevara, might the very man take some needed time off soon. One hopes so after being overexposed over the last six months. If this was the start of vacation, it's an entertaining one. Cool said Andrea, keeping up one of the influential stars of his generations. So let's go to Ruby Solo versus Tainello as All Out Zero Hour. Tainello shattered Ruby Solo's nose with a car rectal surgery and mental out of the chin for three months. After his private return last week, Solo battled Melo one on one Wednesday night. Looked to set up differences once and for all. Melo controlled the pace of the match and break and appeared to be on a route of victory. Solo escaped an attempt to take a hill, rocked his opponent with her own knees in her nose. No future follows. Solo scored a hard fought victory. This was a tense 
physical battle and led to all up there in effort by a commentator to put over history to the injury that signed So a whole under unseemly reason he matched it took place in the women's division. Given a week they had a clear two performers able to carry out their roles in it. Mills a great heel but has to be spent so much time being annoying at her and Guevara's relationship the rest of the world tends to underrate part of her performance. She is fantastic, does the little things by land of facial expressions that really elevate her performance. Soho, on the other hand, ranks right side far TR, one of the worst book acts in AEW. Hopefully, this returns gives her a second chance of being a star she should be. The AEW World Championship and Diamond Diana Ring Match Main Event. Ricky Starts with NJF, one of the most anticipated matches of the reason AEW has three capped out winter coming up. So, Diamond NJF defending the World Championship and the Diamond Diana Ring against Ricky Starks. NJF called injury and in leg. As we saw, we rookie missed his opponents. Front, Starks fought through the pain and period, forced him out of combat midway through the, the bout. The heel cut him off, targeting the left arm of his opponent, seeking the assault of the Europe arm bar. He finally applied about to sleep for it out. He saw the rush about on a different, huge different occasion, but never in a few to execute the move. As you find Slitter out, he used the reference to shield. Moments later, he rocked the baby face with a little blow, short score, the tainted win. The finish was great, even the execution began there was a little bit desired. It played back to last week's promo, and then Jay ended with some low blow. When all fells, the devil fought a cheap shot again inside of trouble. It's actually that building NJF's reign on the end that he essentially, 1987, talky talk man, repeatedly finding screw ways to hold on to the title, despite coming close to losing on multiple occasions. It's not the worst way to book a heel champ. After however, the so that the Earth is an infinitely better wrestler talker, while talent was a little few clean wins with it. nice emphasize that. Fans should not expect that bad against the Brian Nelson though. The American Dragon chased the champ out of the arena to close the show, set they the a showdown. The match should be even better than we saw here. So yeah. Now let's go to SmackDown. Okay, now SmackDown recap. Mm. Let's start with the women's tag team championship match with Morgan Tegan Knox. Versus Damage Control. <sighs> Two weeks after the surprise return, the shower come to the aid of Liv Morgan. Beat down by Damage Control, Tegan Knox team with her former SmackDown Women's Champion to challenge Dakota Kai, Io Sky, Women's Tag Team Championship in the opening contest of Friday night. The baby faces started hot, but Knox prevented Morgan from utilizing a kendo stick, slowed their momentum despite heading into their commercial break on a roll. They found themselves on the defensive coming out of it. The heels isolated Knox, who fought back and made the Janine hot tag to Morgan as the challenges were laid. Knox exposed of Bailey in the front row, only to her front unknown assailant in a black hooded to kick the wish competitor to set up the moon on the sky for a successful title defense. These two teams that consider the country really good well, especially down the stretch. Been nice for a tire heat potion, not to have a car during a road break, so for him, things later. But see expectations, the mystery of Santa Claus, leaving Chelsea Green speculated as a pioneer return. Month or two to bring a few in her feud with Knox, who laying with a damage control would kick off roster run in a most suitable and successful manner than willing to bring this to a regime that turned the cost during her first 10 on Friday nights. Mm-hmm. And basically the the update, the mystery woman was revealed to Exile Lee backstage. So yeah. Exile Lee's return, so yeah. Late night calls out Bray Wyatt. A week after being inducted by Bray Wyatt backstage, a furious Leon LA Knight hit the ring called out Bray Wyatt, the former WWE Universal Champion served the both he and Knight story were in, done with talking. Knight attacked them being down a corner to a pre tape video from Uncle Howdy. <laughs> Anyone asking want to see anything real scary from there? How do you step down the stage, leaving all involved confused? This was a newsworthy segment because for the first time we saw something happen. The story has been a slow burn, while it may not be a bad thing, it doesn't really need something fancy to get deep into. A guy would reveal that how do you wet your are not surprising in person or later on all in later. Exception. There are some who not prefer supernatural spooky stuff in wrestling, but it changes the tone of the show, provides something different. We know, who knows the payoff will ultimately be, but why is he in more command than he did as a fiend or that we should be thankful? So, yeah. Then I got the championship match, Ricochet versus Hunter. After defeating Fasa Ali, Bastrom, and Santos Cabar to win the SmackDown World Cup, Ricochet challenged Gunther for the Intercontinental Championship. 
Hell anticipated a rematch between the two, but one element established that he was not afraid to ring generally, but larger and more country competitor down and worked him over. Ricochet attempted to come back on two different occasions, but got to call him off. Second time with a painful lettery at a finish with a lesser competitor. The challenger did find a magical comeback. Power Rank got the down with a brain bust and exchanged Star Press for only could generate a two count. Got the experience. Stretches minutes later, I mailed the key opponent down, following a power bomb. He let us testify that problem later, delivering the last sip of the for the win. Gunther continues to push for the rest of the year competition while Ricochet added this new good year with a fantastic championship clash that had in Chicago hanging on near fall, every near fall. The striking was great. Honestly, the, the dynamic was even better. The strike used to follow. Gold cutters, petters, threw everything ahead of each other. One prevailed. It was a great bit of business. A fine way to wrap up. Weeks long story involving SmackDown World Cup as winner. Showman remained involved in an ongoing story, continued to to present imposing to Gunther and Miriam. Fake on his accusation, Ricochet and Fels the tag team swords as soon as next week. Triple threat tag team match, hit row vs. Viking Raiders vs. Diego del Sol, then Phantasm. The three rivalry between Hit Row. Viking Raiders and Leo the Phantasm head to head in a triple threat match Friday night in a winning 10 winner shot at the Osos and the SP Tag Champ next week. FIFA found out the mega competitor at the teams. Mm. Action, heavy match, something bringing down. Women getting involved, fighting spilling the floor. Back inside the ring, hit row earned a win by Vin Pinfall, catching a ticket next week's show. Boris Patch match in each competitor's career. Honestly, there's a lot of fun, not still the most fluid ma- matches and points. It was still a really enjoyable party match to highlight the blue brand tag division. And gave Hit Row the win and needed to eight haste ten on the roster. It uh, was see Tony Tom Dalla as it was hurt all about. Affected by whatever is going on with his left knee. Here to Roman from SmackDown. Yes, we did WWE Universal Channel. Roman Reigns laid the bun line to square circle for show closing promo. Reigns did not remove the hurrah for signs of the title that unlike hope and expected, but he did point out not only impressed Kevin Owens problem that played the bloodline. He retrained the tag team match set for December 30th. SmackDown before John C. appeared on the screen. Read a supposed test from Kale Reels. He will compete on December 30th to keep his 20 year streak of WWE matches alive. Well, if it intended to make the December 30th episode SmackDown Destination Viewing, WWE will be accomplished that, accomplished that. We will know heading into the show when John Cena will return for December 30th, but him to compete in an actual match is a game changer. Putting him in a, an ongoing Roman Zayn Reigns story lends the credibility to the best in WWE right now, trying to greater light on it. Good for him for coming back, agreeing to work the match, keeping that ring ring streak alive. So, yeah. Mm-hmm. And now that was the main show, the match SmackDown. Here's my my thoughts, SmackDown. It was a pretty good show, a little bland, but still the Bloodline segment close the show was okay. So it hit some good things. Anyway, let's get to the to Rampage recap. Sam Guevara versus John Moss. Let's start with that. Moss and Guevara were ready in the ring to kick off the show, the match. So they were prior to seeing Moss already in the entrance. Surprisingly, the high flyer took a chill early by deploying the same kind of aggression which Moxley and Noam used a lot of strength but getting into the fist fight with a former world champion really a good idea. As the Moss began to fight back, Guevara started to employ some of the high flyer offense that made him famous. It was a matter of time before Moxley picked up the win. He did a lot of self for Guevara, but the Spanish guy was unable to survive the Bulls on show. It was a much more violent match than most people thought expected. Moss is known for his blood encounters, but Guevara is in what may have been intentional, having no color in the mat after Guevara ripping out Moss's ears helped him make feel more competitive. So yeah, Moss called out Aaron Page after the match, and the Cowboy was more than happy to meet him in exile for a fight. Scary eventually broke up him up a page gun shots or shots, you know. Britt Baker vs. Sky Blue and Warlow vs. Axis Prime. The MD accompanied to the ring by Jane Hayter, Rebel for the match against Blue. The 23 year old underdog tried to get an early advantage of the final self to kick out the pin air being hit. Double hundred percent suplex. Blue in her basket on fence. It's always gonna end with Baker scoring the win. 
We just saw Edson uh, Prade dready upset a former champion on Dynamite. So seeing it happen again on Rampage and about Rolo. This is magically basic, but two having her car straight up sewn up and kind of say I have a confrontation with It's a good way to cap this segment though. Real quick. The Rolo squash local talent exists prime. They have named like Times Farmer. Um, I don't know, like War Daddy, the former TNT champ, picked up the easy win with a sob on sympathy. This thing ha- it happened, but there's a section of AW audience that always like to see Warlow wrestle, so it made sense to give him the church match and I just to get him on TV. So, yeah, it was pretty much a squash match and a wins match you've seen. So, yeah, basically. Then we go to the best friends, Rose, Cassie, the Butcher, and Blaze, Seven, and Sabian. The final match of the night saw Rose team up with Cassie, best friends about a group that consisted of two, Blaze, Seven, Seven, and Sabian. So yeah, pretty much. Tremperetta, Sabian, sorry for the teams, but t- Seven tagged in some heat under Trent to see which one is better. And it take long for this development, the huge ball. The bunny and penalty before stopped OC for hitting him. Allowed the Butcher to send him out of the ring. As with any match, kind of competitors, it was a fast pace, saw the momentum shift many times. In the end, Rhodes hit a running bulldog at seven to score the win for his team. And, well, mostly it was, there was also a problem with Saria talking about her match on January 11th, which is going to be a big a surprise partner. You already know, so keep it a surprise. And for Rampage, it was a great Rampage show. It had what you need, and it was a pretty good show. Next week's Dynamite will be a lot better. So, yeah. Mm hmm. Anyway, let's go to hot takes. I got a couple of hot takes. Booker T's, Booker T's, the way he talks about people, the way he talks about, like, like Booker T's, like a WWE bootlicker. That's my hot take. Booker T's, a, a, a bootlicker. That's what I see in him at this point. Got another hot take. I feel a hot take coming. Like, John Moxley is basically a mecha star at this point. NJF has not reached his megastar status at this point. That's my personal hot take. NJ just almost is almost there, but I haven't had how to reach there. You know? It's something like that. And one more hot take. I honestly want CM Punk to make up to apologize to the lead and do the right thing. And that's what I feel about the whole thing with CM Punk the elite. So yeah. All right, let's go to the news story. Right, let's get to the news stories. WWE former vice president of global TV production, Michael Mansour, signs with AEW. Okay. In May of 2020, Michael Mansour officially departed in WWE following a run beginning in 20, 2009 as a production assistant for Rising Through the Ranks as a associate producer, producer and managing producer in 2016. Mansour has promoted to vice president role, serving as a director of record for numerous, numerous WWE pay per views, TV productions over the years. It now appears that though Mansour is back in pro wrestling business at Empire W Insider, reporting that he sent to start an AEW as a senior vice president and co executive producer for Wednesday's episode of Dynamite, which we'll be getting to in a minute. Dynamite, which I already told you about Dynamite. So from PW Insider, like Michael Mansour, the former vice president of Global T Production, W has been hired at AEW to start tomorrow's AEW Dynamite taping. Told he was back in his full gear pay per view a few weeks back as well. He's now official with the company. Mansour, official title, senior vice president, co executive producer for AEW. For AEW. Prior to WWE's departure, Mansour was seen as a big part of Triple H regime. Many women become the manager at the next Kevin Nunn with the idea of being eventually filled with Kevin Nunn's role. Um, though LJ never came to be in the news of Manzor's departure to be shocked the company at the time of Valley number of the backstage team. Since the party in WWE in 2020, Manzor worked as executive producer for Matt Pacafi, for Moulin, who was senior vice president and executive producer, a global production for one championship and then a promotion. Her role really stepped down last month. And so we said updated Twitter about how to confirm new role for sharing a tweet letting his follow know that he was back in the pro wrestling game. <sighs> yeah. Pretty much my story is helping AEW so what? Yeah. Uh, 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 Carl and 
Anderson said to fe- set to feature on NJPW's Wrestle Kingdom 17, the first WWE dar- star to do so. Mostly he's going to be head off Final Farewell, mostly. So let's get to it. Carl Anderson set to feature. So yeah, anyway. October 10th, earlier this year, this week, Luke Gallows, Carl Anderson, and an unannounced returns to WWE with now you AJ Styles. Despite this, Anderson currently reigns that NJWW never overweight champion with the belief that we will work in agreement in place allowing the Bullet Club member to appear for both companies. It was reported by FIFA back in October that Carl Anderson will work multiple days with New Japan beyond his upcoming never overweight title defense and that will always be in place before they get birth. In a good place before the best of frame back. Alright. Kurt Anderson started to send the end for Openweight Championships Wednesday against Hikaloyo. That happened. You guys, uh huh. That Wednesday happened this week. So, according, it's going to be featured on Russell King's 17th event on January 4th. Anderson is going to be defending a title. Basically, we learned from multiple sort of WWE New Japan come to terms an agreement for Anderson to wrestle on the 4th 23 Kingdom event in Tokyo Dome, making it the first ever contact WWE talent work and the biggest event of the year. The reporter notes that Anderson has long before factored the New Japan's plans for the event on for a good butter WWE. The two sides have believed that come to agreement to keep New Japan's creative plans in place, thus he perspective a feature on Rhea's show. As a kind of expected there's a strong role at New England Dome with the biggest singles time, time belt reported lineup, biggest show of the year. So yeah. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Uh huh. Yeah. Basically, uh, Carl is gonna be the first WWE star and I don't know what's gonna be going forward. So Ray Ray is set to return to WWE as vice president in January. Over the past few weeks, the reports that indicated that Regal will be leaving AEW returning to WWE back to the Reports they were seen referring to the former Blackpool Combat Club manager Red Naughty following the tap on JF. So, WA sources have confirmed that Regal, uh, okay, confirmed that Regal has officially come to terms with a new position of the company. It started the first week of January. We are told Regal will have a vice president in the company when he returns. Well, not heard what official title role will be. Like, Regal seriously said that WWE Director of Talent Development had a global recording for its release for this year. Join AEW led by Brian Danson, John Moxley, Carter, Castanelli, Way of Utah, Black Bullet Combat Club. Prior to the firm release, Regal will want to build Charles Triple H, Levesque's closest allies backstage, and that's no surprise to a prominent position of power next month. So, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, pretty much Regal's going to be in power for January. So, the Vince McMahon situation might interrupt it, but no, Vince likes Regal, so it's going to be safe. So, Brock Lesnar versus Gunter initially listed for WrestleMania 39 with 2022 nearly over. The eyes of fans slowly begin to turn towards the road to WrestleMania Royal Rumble, set for late January. Monday, man, that prime position WrestleMania next to Gunther Manfron and Walter held in a 10 this year has. Number of great matches throughout 2022. Like the same as Michael J. among others. Yeah, uh, Russell Co. Russell News Co. Pierce have revealed that who would plan to put Ring General will be at the year's show shows. A match with former WWE champ Brock Lesnar reportedly ter- listed eternally for the show. So, Russell Co. After asking someone who's familiar with great plans, Russell News told that Wrestler vs. Lesnar vs. Gunther is one of the matches listed eternally for the show. Gunther has talked about wanting the match because he feels match with Lesnar would. But then the biggest possible challenge for him. So, Gunther has made no scene in the past about his desire to face us in WWE. Just this last month, there was a dream match. The former NC UK chance say they feel through the match with the base current would be his face. Yeah, current one that he hopes to see when WrestleMania 39 rolls. So, Wrestle News go on to mention despite there's still you know, some months to go to WrestleMania 39 kicks off, but it should be the all top match laid off event. We don't want to come be. The unlikely he'll tear up the script and not Miss McMahon. Finally, wrestling and also for Frail that less than schedule for Royal Rumble next month. The main chamber February does not be long before we have a clear direct direction to WWE Superstars. They're going with two dominant stars. <sighs> yeah, pretty much. Mm hmm. Lesnar versus Gunther WrestleMania is happening. So, pretty much, yeah. Mm hmm. Alright, get to the other news. Matt Riddle poorly off the WWE TV due to second drug test violation. While it was a win over Red Red Kevin Owens on December 5th, I saw Raw, Skull Sola, took out a time to brutalize the King of Bros during the attack, paid tribute to Umaga by hitting a Samoan spike on Riddle, wrenching out. Many fans were surprised how far Sola went in his attack of Riddle after the 
Matt was hanging away in ambulance, though Cassie hangs up by slam net and has revealed that the reason behind being riddled by the TV is related to a violation of drug tests. So he was able to confirm that the reason WWE wrote Riddle off because he failed some drug tests and started to rehab. The bleeds were going on. He already entered treatment. We were going as most programs ran for eight days. So we need to finish in time for his return in six weeks, pretty much. So his first appearance offense apparently came in August in the build of SummerSlam. Riddle was left to few Seth Rollins, which the match between the two has been pushed back to September's Clash at Castle. Fans hold that Riddle will clear the return in six weeks on his rehab is concluded. Pretty much, Matt Riddle went back to drugs, and that's not good. So, stay away stay away from drugs and get yourself clean or riddle. Mm-hmm. Jericho told Khan about to sign Bandito at the 8, 1928 bout. Okay, Jericho has a probably praised by Bandito. At part of his already champion run, he took on the former chance to look at the script of Legacy of Ring of Honor. September 28, episode 8 of Dynamite. Jericho battled the former champion, Bandino. The bout was clearly praised. Jericho was the one Bandino signed, stepping in the ring with him. So this is what Jericho said. Like, going on there with this guy not knowing... What about him is like, like, uh, he had me held up a standing suplex. Okay, this is what Jericho said. Going out with his guy, and I don't know what he's about. His way, Philly has such power. He held up a suplex in 60 seconds. Mother was rushing to my head to barely hold on. He was so strong, started strong, started to go nuts. That's where he had them. We had a pull a bunch of crazy stuff. I took a hurricane off the paper and took a j- jumping back with suplex, moonsault, bow slam, took a German super after roast. One of these matches where everything was going real well. Spread the mask around, had him tap out to the wall, soon and got back and said, I'm gonna come and seen this guy. And that's what we did. It took a while to get him to commit. Man, we signed him big things in the future for Bandino. Mm-hmm. The Bandino competed in the AW World Title Eliminator Tournament and had a full gear, but lost to Ethan Page. Yeah, pretty much. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, pretty much. Pretty much. Yeah. Like, bad news is a great signing. And, yeah. alright, let's get to the more random news and rumors. So let's talk. There's more. Okay. Let me get to it. It'll be a minute. Alright. Here's the, as I promised, like, mm-hmm. Here's more, more random news, rumors. Uh, okay. His mirror is Aston AEW. It says he knocks up to him. And I'm doing everything I can for on. I'm just sitting waiting for the opportunity. So Miro is waiting for his opportunity, but AEW tried to give him an opportunity. He said Miro said no. So does Miro has a big head? Basically, yeah, yeah, he has a big head. So that's basically it. he has a big head. Let's leave it at that. Jericho talks about how he made more money than Japan did for most of WrestleMania matches, based on the fact with Sasha Banks, Japan big offer. So yeah, Jericho did make big money. And this made sense. WWE is a little bit cheaper, so and whatever. According to Meltzer, Shasha Banks is seeking an other salary compared to what Bengal and Charlotte Flair are getting, but WWE didn't offer anything close to that. So, and also Meltzer added a reputation with WWE as one of them being very talented in the ring, but had been behind the scenes issues of VS problems. Well, that proves that WWE will mean the bullshit about Sasha Banks, and she ain't not worth it. And they're not going to offer Shasha Base a lot of money. Mm-hmm. Obviously, well, no, well, no. It's, 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 uh, I don't know. Like, according to Wrestling Observer, right, a large number of people turned out during interviews with a recent Mr. McMahon documentary. What do you, well, oh, there's more people asked, but didn't participate because Chris Barrett, Jericho, Jim Cornette, Eric Bishop, Ryan Danson, CM Punk, McFuller, Jim Ross, 10 men, Wall Street, Wall Street Journal. So, basically, yeah, they, Turned down the offer because this man is part of a sex pest at this point and it's not worth him to come back to the company. Mm, yeah, he's been a sex pest. I'm more worried for WWE if he does come back. So, But I'm not. Mostly I'm not. So, who cares? So, yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay, that was, a, this is, I guess, the only podcast. I'll see y'all Saturday, next Saturday. And see you then.